here's something about me. My favorite movie of all time is the Merchant Ivory film, A Room with a View. And if you've watched the movie, you will know that the beginning of the movie is set in Florence, Italy. And that's why I had to go to Florence was because I love the movie so much. So Ian and I went to Florence for our 20th wedding anniversary. And here we are on an anniversary trip celebrating our 31st wedding anniversary. And we're in Tunbridge Wells, which is where the second half of the movie takes place. And I'm not sure I'll be visiting any filming locations, but I'm just soaking up the Tunbridge Wells vibes and thinking fondly of the characters in the film. On a very somber and sad note, I am remembering with love Julian Sands, one of the stars of that movie, who recently it was confirmed that he died on a hiking expedition and just really, really sad story about how that happened, but really respect him uh, as an actor. Very talented man. It turns out I did have the chance to visit a filming location after all. Ian wanted to visit Chittingston Castle, which was a quirky castle that I'll give you a peek into at the end of this video. And adjacent to that is the village of Chittingstone, which is where a lot of A Room with a View was filmed. So here is our chance to check it out. As I mentioned earlier, when I heard we were coming to Tunbridge Wells, I immediately thought of A Room with a View. And if you don't know A Room with a View, I highly encourage you to watch that film from 1985. It's the best rom-com ever, but it's a unique one. It is an Edwardian England period piece, which takes place in both Tuscany and Florence, as well as here in Kent, in the Tunbridge Wells area. In the fictional town of Summer Street, which is actually this village of Chiddingstone, here in Kent where we are now. As you can see from the water droplets on the window, it's been raining quite a bit. So my plan was to get out and show you some things around the village, but we'll see how I get on with that endeavor. Um, a little bit more about the movie. So the, the plot of the movie is it basically is a love triangle and coming of age movie about Lucy Honeychurch magnificently played by Helena Bonham Carter in her breakout role, and her two love interests, George Emerson, played by the magnificent Julian Sands, may he rest in peace, and the other man in the triangle, Cecil, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, who did a phenomenal job. The other actors in this movie are people you may have heard of, like Dame Judi Dench and Dame Maggie Smith and Simon Callow and other actors with smaller roles also are just phenomenal actors who are together as part of this great ensemble cast like Denham Elliott and Rupert Graves. I love this movie. All the actors are amazing. The story is fantastic. The settings, the scenery, everything is just super entertaining. So Simon Callow plays Reverend Beeb, and he is just a hysterical character in this. This church here that you can see through the window, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more as I get out of the car. This is Reverend Beeb's church in the movie. And the rectory is where he and Lucy sat and had the pivotal conversation where he encouraged her to tell the truth and be true to her feelings. The Lichgate area is very familiar on the front of the church because that's shown in the film, as are the houses opposite the church. And then the village hall was used as George Emerson's home. Let's grab a brolly and brave the rain and go take a little look at Chittingston. The rain has let up a little bit, so I've decided to take this footpath and go try to find the Chiding Stone. The village got its name from this large sandstone formation. According to legend, the Chiding Stone you see here was used as a medieval place of judgment, most often to publicly punish or chide overbearing, nagging wives who lived nearby. We found the Chiding Stone, and here we are the day after our 31st wedding anniversary. And Ian, what do you want to scold me for? 
Nothing, dear. <laughs> Aw, isn't he sweet? <laughs> Chittingston is a very well-preserved example of what's called a Tudor one-street village. The buildings along Chittingston Road are a display of Kentish-style architecture. Half-timbered sides, gables galore, and stone-hung red-tile roofs. The post office is in a building that dates back to at least 1453. Chittingstone Village actually has been preserved by the National Trust because of a legacy left from John Arthur Fallows. Interestingly, of Bournemouth, which is a little bit far away from here. Unfortunately, the church closed at 4 p.m., so I won't be going inside, but it's just nice to come and look around the churchyard and the exterior. I wanted to see where Reverend Beebe lived, so I asked a local resident where the rectory was. I came here and found this locked gate at the end of a long drive, but it turns out that was not the right place anyway. This is where Mr. Beebe in A Room with a View lived, at the end of this long drive with a locked gate. Because of the gate, I thought this little telephoto zoom would be the only glimpse I would catch of the rectory. But then I discovered this public footpath behind the old rectory, and we sneaked a cheeky little walk down here and a couple photos over the hedge. But here from the back of the churchyard, we can get a perfect view down into the old vicarage, which is beautiful. And here is a still from the movie that shows the carriage awaiting Lucy outside the rectory. The other place I most wanted to see in the village was where the Emersons lived. In the movie, their home was across the street from the church. So I was excited to see the village hall and check it out. Despite the fact that the foliage and lights are different now, this is definitely the home where the Emersons lived in Summer Street. I loved visiting Chittingston. It is a picturesque, beautiful wee village in the Tudor One Street style. I would have enjoyed visiting it even if it weren't where my favorite movie was filmed. Now let me show you a quick look at Chittingston Castle. You can actually access the castle grounds through this gate at the end of Chittingston Road in the village. This is Chittingstone Castle. We are going to pay a brief visit, so I'll just give you a quick peek. In the 1500s, Chittingston was really the place to be. It was the political and industrial heart of the nation because of all the royalty and courtiers regularly visiting nearby Hever Castle. In the 1700s, Henry Streetfeld turned the house into a castle. Dennis Erbau was an avid antiques collector from London, and his collection is here at Chittingstone. He left it to the public when he died. He lived here at Chittingstone from 1955 until he died in 1977. This is the Japanese room where you see a lot of his collection, including samurai artifacts because he was intrigued with samurai warriors. This is the Buddhist room. This was also an avid collector of Egyptian things. King Tut's tomb was discovered when he was 17 years old. That became a lifelong interest of his. Oh my goodness, he was a serious Egyptian collector. A man was buried in this coffin 3,000 years ago. This is Dennis's library. He also was an avid collector of books. And in this room, there are 3,000 volumes with some books dating back to 1552. And because every castle needs a great hall, this is the great hall. This is the white rose room. This is called the four poster room. And in it is the smallest four poster bed I have ever seen. <music> This room is called the print room and houses his Stuart and Jacobite collection. Okay, this is an example of some of the bizarre things in his collection. This is hair from Charles Edward Stuart from approximately 1736. This is hair 
and a heart-shaped silver locket from James II. These are portraits of Stuarts and Queen Anne and Charles II. Mary, Queen of Scots, James II, and Charles I. We already know that Dennis Eyre Bauer was a rather eccentric man who collected a lot of things, but there's also an even more salacious side to his story. In September of 1957, Dennis was arrested for attempted murder and attempted suicide. He had visited the home of his fiancée, who had decided to break off their engagement. He was trying to persuade her to continue with plans to marry him, and as the story goes, he took an antique pistol from his collection to aid his persuasion. <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea. Allegedly, the pistol accidentally went off when he took it out of his pocket. The lady was injured, but went on to survive. However, Dennis believed he had killed her, so he turned the gun on himself and shot himself. He woke up in the hospital and was sent to Wormwood Scrubs Prison. Some of his friends came to his defense and worked to secure his release five years later. After that, he lived here in an apartment in Chiddingston Castle until his death in 1977. Before leaving through the tea room, we have to take a peek in here at the servants' hall to see how the other half lived. This is the bridge coming out of the village over this beautiful river. And just through here, you can still see the castle. I hope you enjoyed joining me for this little exploration of the filming location of my favorite film ever. Next, please check out one of these other videos of castles and villages here in Kent that we enjoyed visiting. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.